one of the, the icons of internet marketing and uh, just an all around great guy. I, I really sincerely encourage you to listen to this presentation very, very carefully because he may not survive till his next uh, presentation. He's a guy that likes to live on the edge and if you've seen some of the things that he's done throughout his life, uh, you may wonder if he's going to be around for the next presentation anyway. So give him a big standing ovation, Yannick Silver. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. All right. Thanks. Uh, so Ken called me up, and uh, we had a, a speaker at the last minute that had a family emergency. So I live not too far from here, so I came in. I'm kind of like the... Uh, the B team or C team and, and bring me in. I'm the dude on the bubble, you know, that he doesn't get the invite to the wedding until the other people uh, say that they're not RFCPing, that's like me. So I decided that we're gonna do uh, something a little different today, if that's cool with you guys. We are going to, uh, we're gonna draw. And, and more, more not like we, probably just me. Uh, I, as a kid, I wanted to, uh, wanted to be a professional hockey player and a cartoonist in the off season. And so that never happened. So now I get to live out part of my fantasy and I'm gonna, you know, just instead of talking about the latest autoresponder technique or copywriting technique or, you know, just any sort of technique that is gonna work today, may not work in, in a month or six months or so on, I wanna just give you guys some of the fundamentals that have helped me become financially independent. Um, how many of you know, uh, have heard of me before all right, almost everyone. All right, so I'll give you a quick little nutshell version so you can pay attention while I make these really bad drawings. Uh, so I started off in a one-bedroom apartment with my internet company, and uh, literally it was at 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke up with this idea that I had and, and poked my wife my finger. I'm like, miss, miss, wake up. I got this great idea. She's like, oh, God, please, just go back to bed, Yannick. And um, so I didn't go back to bed. I jumped out of bed and registered a domain name called Instant Sales Letters. And as they say, the rest is, is kind of history. And that was my first million dollar product. And, and then I've gone on to build a lot of others. And, but really there's been, there's been some fundamentals to it. And I just wanna kinda share those with you if you guys are good for that. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sort of, sort of go over this, these fundamentals of uh, make more money, have more fun, and, uh, and give more back, if you guys are okay with that. Uh, so a little different. And then at the end, um, I got some prizes for some really good questions. Uh, it doesn't have to be related to any of that. You guys can ask me your burning questions on internet marketing or how you go off and skydive from 30,000 feet or whatever the hell you guys wanna, wanna know about. So is that cool with you guys? So you get your questions answered. So I'm not gonna be able to stick around for too long. So let me, uh, let me diagram what I think is a really nice balance in life. And I just learned that this is called a Venn diagram. How many of you have ever heard of that? I never did. Very, uh, yeah, I never, never learned that in, in school. So this is a uh, so Venn diagram. And hopefully you guys can, can read that. So to me, this is, uh, this is the ultimate, this is the balance that I'm, I try and strike, which is make more money, have more fun, and then give more back. So in here, if we can, this is you know, kind of what I've started dubbing a maverick entrepreneur. You can call it you know, whatever you want. But you know, to me, that's, that's pretty simple. I mean, it's three things, three really basic things, but, but they're pretty profound once, once you start thinking about it. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about the, the make more money part because that seems to be the part that so many people get fixated on. But before we talk about that, I just wanna kind of tell you if you, if you look at each of these in, in three separate spots, and, and so many people focus in on, on just the make money part, but the truth is when, when you're off and you're having fun, a lot more money usually comes to you. When you're, when you're giving, when you're giving back, uh, we'll talk about giving back a lot, um, a lot more money comes to you just through just these weird random occurrences. So they're all extremely related, and if you only focus in on, on one section, you become um, just really boring. And uh, I mean, so you make a lot more money. Who really cares? You're off working the entire day, and your life pretty much sucks. And,
but there, there's just incredible relationship, and I just uh, kind of challenge you to, to try that out, too, especially when you think, well, I can't have more fun because I got to go get this project done. You, you get this real creative charge when, when you go off and, and do something like that. So let's talk about the, uh, the make more money part first. Um, actually, one more thing on, on the life balance. I think this is really important. This is one of my, my friends, Mike Hill. I have to give him credit for this. He's, uh, he was one of our speakers at, at Underground. He's uh, Maverick Business uh, Adventures member. And he calls this concept life cups. So here's the cup. Uh, some of you that were with me back there, uh, I, I spilled my life cup. And, uh, <laughs> and Lisa was, was uh, wonderful enough to give me a new glass of water. This is that crazy oxidizing alkaline water. I, I feel incredible already. <laughs> I'm going to be jumping off the ceiling pretty soon. So here's, uh, here's what most people have in their life cup. Most people have this. Their only focus, for the most part, is that one-dimensional, make money. They're like, wow, you know, I'd really like to have more fun in my life. So let's add, let's add some, some fun. Oh, you know, I'd really like to, to give back a little bit. Let's add some, some give back to our life. And pretty soon what happens is all of this just spills over, and you got a pretty hectic, crazy, just out-of-control life. And so what, what Mike really told me, and it's, I think, a great analogy, is how many of you seen that uh, there, there's a presentation that's been going around that this professor or someone did where they, they stick, you know, he'll put the big rocks in first and then put all, all the little things in. But, you know, to me, I think it's, it's really, really incredibly important to start putting in the most important things first. And, and just, you know, taking some time to think about that. You know, think about our own, our own values and, and what's, what's really important. It's, um, you know, I'm not here to to be uh, some motivational speaker or anything like that. I'm just trying to share with you what, what has worked for me. And, and there's also times when, especially if you're feeling frustrated with what's going on in your life, just sit down and, and think about what is the most important thing in, in your life. And it's, no, normally it's not the next project or the next big money-making thing. It's your family. It's the people that are important to you. It's, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's about experiences and relationships is all that we take with us. And that, that's about it. So, Putting in the most important stuff first, you know, the, maybe it's the give is most important to you. Maybe it's the have fun is most important. And, and then it's the uh, make money. And all that, all that comes. So let's, uh, let's move on to the make money. These are some of the fundamental keys that have worked for me, uh, made, me made me a millionaire, that, that made me financially independent. And so I look at... I always have this, this question that I ask myself, and I think questions are incredibly important. And this is, uh, this is gonna be one of those really poor drawings. Does anyone know what that is? Yes! They're gonna get harder as we go along. Uh, so, all right, this is price. This is value. And it's a pretty simple equation that I always think about. And I try and ask myself, I have something in my planner. When I originally start on this sort of, uh, you know, Ken mentioned I'm from the dark ages of, of the internet. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, you know, yeah. As soon as I got on the scene, it's like, wow, he's just an overnight success. Well, truth be told, it was, you know, six, seven years of studying fundamental direct marketing and, and doing a lot of that stuff. But, when I first started that, that upward trajectory, one thing that I wrote in my planner was, I get rich by enriching others 10 times to 100 times what they pay me in return. And it sounds like a really simple concept, but here's what it does. It creates really happy customers who are going to keep buying from you. We all know, we've all heard that, um, that our, our profits come from, from our customers who keep buying from us over and over again. It's, that's totally true. And if you deliver this 10 times to 100 times value, so that, to me that means even something as simple as my instant sales letters for 40 bucks, I want it to make sure that it, it's going to deliver 400 to $4,000 in return for anyone that buys it. And, and that's, you know, those are the questions that I keep asking myself anytime I'm coming out with a product or a resource or a tool or whatever the case is. Um, you know, how can I make this worth 10 times to 100 times in value? And sometimes you're going to get really 
creative solutions and, and start with the questions because your questions totally dictate your answers. We'll talk about that in a minute, so I think that's a key thing. But here's what this is all about. As you keep, you know, think about uh, of one of these balancing scales. As you keep increasing the value, your, the price of what people perceive it to be keeps lowering and lowering. And that's how, that's how you make it a no-brainer for people to, to hopefully take you up on, on your offer. All right. Now, let's, uh, by the way, this is, the, this is the first time I've ever done this presentation, so I'm going to poke in my little uh, notebook here. The, uh, the questions, like we talked about, that to me is, is one of the, the biggest things that, that we, can, we can all do. So, what, who, oops, <laughs> spelling, where, why, what else we got here, how, when, <clears throat> you're, you know, our, our minds, like, if we give it a direction, it's going to focus in on, on that direction. So the, what I asked myself before I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I literally asked this question. I said, how can I create a fully automatic website that, that is an incredible value for people, that makes me money while I sleep, and is not just another ebook?" And that's how I got that idea at 3 o'clock in the morning. And one of the things that, that I love to do is I will sit down with the question, take out a, uh, just, you know, a sheet of paper, put the question right here at the top, and, and start writing down the answers. And the first you know, four, five, six answers are going to be kind of pedestrian, normal, just run-of-the-mill answers. But then you're going to get into the more whacked-out answers. And you know, maybe those don't work. Don't, don't censor yourself at this point. This is really important. Don't be like, oh, that can never work, and, and just immediately scratch that off. You want to you wanna just keep, keep it open. And, you, you might not find the exact answer at that point, but, but our minds are a, uh, they, they, they like to hone in on a problem, and that's when they're going to find that solution by actually having the question in front of them. And, um, you know, I just, um, I just got back from, uh, from, from Necker Island, uh, Sir Richard Branson's private island, and we ha held a brainstorming session there for his, uh, for his charity. And it was a very freewheeling, open brainstorming session where, uh, where Branson sort of walked out, and he's like, uh, yeah, we, we had some uh, brainstorming sessions like this before for, for the elders, which is this group that he runs. And, and something to the effect of it made us want to stop the whole project. <laughs> so it wasn't a great brainstorming session because we didn't have a very focused agenda. So you know, I, I saw that, and I heard from a couple of people. I'm like, all right, well, this is really dumb. You know, I, I know better than that. So, we held a, a, just an optional brainstorm session that night, and um, Branson wasn't there, but we had the head of uh, Virgin Unite, the charity, and we're like, okay, what is the two specific questions that you guys want answered that we can help you with? And we did more in that, you know, an hour, hour and a half session than we did in the three hour session that we had earlier. And that's because we had a very focused uh, question that we were, we were working around. All right. Here's, uh, here's something that, that I picked up from, from one, of my, one of my buddies, uh, a guy named Barry Dunlop. And uh, this is all of us. How many of you guys, so I can get a feel for the room, how many of you guys are, are making money online yet? Oh, awesome. Very good. All right. How many of you are just starting? OK, not as many as I thought. Perfect. Um, so here's where, where we all kind of start. So if, like. We, we all sort of, uh, I remember this pretty, pretty vividly, like um, I, got a, I got a tape at that time when I was about 17 years old, a Jay Abraham tape, and it really just you know, opened up my eyes to direct response marketing as a doctor client of mine. I used to sell medical equipment, and he gave me this tape. And I would just listen to these programs over and over again, and my friends who were, I guess, here, they would... Uh, they would, they would see me driving around in my car or, or sometimes hang out with me, and, and I'd pop in these tapes or whatever. They'd see them in there. Normally, I wouldn't listen to them with them. But we were at the, pretty much the exact same spot. But slowly by slowly, just by taking 
you know, small actions, I went like this, and they pretty much, I don't know, stayed like, like that. And, uh, and it was just these small little actions. I learned from a guy named Earl Nightingale, who's a big mentor of mine. Anyone have uh, listened to Earl Nightingale? Awesome, awesome. Um, you should definitely get it if you haven't uh, listened to it. I'd, I'd recommend either Lead the Field or Strangest Secret. And I uh, love that stuff. And in there, one of the things that he mentioned was read for one hour or study for one hour a day and you'll become an expert in three years on whatever subject that you want. And so for me, that was direct response marketing. I, I just love that stuff, could eat it up. And I thought, well, what would happen if I studied for two hours a day or three hours a day? And so that's what happens with this, this amazing curve is you don't see much progress here. This could be, uh, you know, three months down the line, six months down the line. Uh, this could even be maybe like a year right here where you're starting to see some action. But by about, you know, two years, three years, there's just this amazing gap. And that's when people are like, wow, he's an overnight success story. Or how did that happen? And it's just these little actions that you, if you turn them into habit, if you turn them into just something that you could do every single day. Um, I still try and read at least a book a week. On, on different subject matters, and those are just the kind of habits that you want to instill. Something else I want to show you guys that has really been helpful to me is, so this was me, three o'clock in the morning, and this was uh, my goal, and that is $500,000 for uh, instant sales letters. When I, when I created instant sales letters, I had a whole track of what I was gonna do to sell that, that product out to like someone like an e-stamps or some dumb dot-com company. I bet they, I don't even know if they're around anymore. And uh, sell it for $500,000. And on that track, as I went down uh, that, that track, um, pretty quickly people started to ask me, you know, so I was traveling down this track, pretty quickly people started to ask me, you know, what did you do, how did you do it? And it just led to this whole other bigger opportunity of, of teaching people how to take their expertise, their whatever they're passionate about, excited about, and, and teaching internet marketing and all the other stuff that, is, that has come through it. And I really think that on our way to what we think is our ultimate goal, so whatever, all of us have a goal right now, most likely in our heads, or, or a vague idea, or probably a clear idea of where we're going and where we're headed. And the truth is, what I've always found is there's something, uh, this guy named Dan Sullivan, uh, strategic coach, uh, he talks about uh, byproducts. And so I've also heard this from, um, uh, gosh, I can't remember his name now, it'll come to me. But, but this right here is, ends up being our, our ultimate goal. And this is, has been way more rewarding, exciting, uh, just than, than, than selling out for $500,000, which I would never do right now. And then, uh, towards this thing, I've had other, other opportunities and things arise to, that go this way. And um, it's just really, it's really interesting. Um, how many of us have had failure in our lives? Wrong. You guys have had results. You've had sometimes negative results, sometimes positive results. And all of us, you know, on this track, you're going to have what might be called failure. But, but really, it's, you know, if you think of, um, all of us as, as this great experimenter. Here's my, uh, anyone know what that is? Yes, who said that? Huh? Test tube. You sure win an instant sales letter CD-ROM. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, I think of ourselves as just these great experimenters and, and not getting so hung up on, on tying into the results and, and reframing. That, that's been really important is, um, you know, it's, and I've always found that, that every, every failure that we have or what we term a failure is literally one step closer to what, what our ultimate end goal is. And, and really, this never becomes our ultimate end goal because as we're traveling along to here, there's something else that, that we're going we're gonna to come across that, that's even cooler. But the big idea here is this, it all becomes, it comes out of motion. And we would never get to here without, without motion. We can perfectionism is such, such an issue uh, where, where we, you know, we get really scared about introducing something into the world or, or getting out there and, 
and releasing our product or whatever the case is. This great book called uh, Getting Real put out by 37 Signals, worth, worth checking out. The guys uh, who made uh, Basecamp and, um, and Backpacket and a couple other products. And it's just this notion of, let's put something out there really fast, see what happens. If it's crap, it's crap. We get that feedback. But why seclude yourself for years working on something that, that is probably crap? All right. All right, here's, uh, here's something else that, that has really helped me a lot. And all right, good. <laughs> you wonder why I didn't become a cartoonist. All right, so here's, here's where most people live their lives, is, is trading time for money. So time equals money. Um, it's, this is, this is the, one of the biggest things that, it, that ha, has made me incredibly successful, the people that I, I've seen around me, is just trying in almost no way, shape, or form, trying to, to dictate what, what the amount of your financial rewards are to the time spent. So what that means is, is we gotta use leverage. And we can leverage our time. So doing something one time, um, getting paid for it over and over again. If uh, when I do presentations, I like to videotape them. So I'll, I'll put them out there, typically sell the DVDs or make them available or something like that. Um, if, I, if I write a newsletter, I want to I wanna take pieces of it maybe and use it as articles for my blog or, or use it for special reports or whatever the case is but just thinking about how you can do work one time and hopefully get paid over and over and over again for it. Um, how you can leverage people, how you can bring people onto your team who have uh, unique skill sets that you don't have and, and leverage that. Leverage, um, leverage intellectual property, leverage uh, processes. All of us have processes in our business. So many of us don't realize that we could actually license a lot of different processes that we have uh, to other businesses to use. Um, so, for instance, one of my very first information products was I sold a uh, how to get more patients product to, to doctors, to cosmetic surgeons, dermatologists, and so forth. And that came as a result of leveraging my one-on-one -on -one consulting that I did with, uh, with docs uh, while I was still selling medical equipment. So try and think about that, how you can leverage uh, skill sets. Like for me, one of my, the most important uh, skill sets and assets that I ever learned was, was copywriting. Uh, we got Toe Cracker over there, who's a pretty darn good copywriter. And uh, would you say that's a pretty good asset to have? Major asset, most people don't want to do it, as you know. Yeah, so, you know, taking the time to, to learn about copywriting, that lets us leverage, you know, all of a sudden, when I learned that, um, we, my, my dad, I used to, so my dad's a Russian immigrant, came over in 76 when I was two and a half, worked for, you know, anyone who's worked in a family business, you know that you do pretty much everything and anything. And so when I was 14, I was telemarketing for latex gloves, and I was 16, he's like, Mr. Yannick, go make some, some sales. And uh, that, that's pretty much what he sounds like. And he, uh, so, you know, knocking on doors just sucks. And so pretty quickly, as I learned direct response marketing, I'm like, oh, I can write an ad or I can write a letter and have docs actually call me? Wow, this is so much better. So it's all about, all about that leverage and thinking about how you, can, how you can use that more in your life. And if you think this stuff is too simple, it's really the simple stuff, it's the fundamental stuff that, that gets us to, to where we want to go. It's not, it's not the fancy pants techniques that, that really get us there. All right, anyone finding this useful? All right, one person, excellent. <laughs> all right, here is, uh, here's another quick thing. Uh, this is, for the most part, this is our lives. Um, this is Facebook, Twitter, uh, I am, I don't know, phone calls, whatever. Um, I'll tell you what that is in a second. So. 
right here in the center is uh, what, what Dan Sullivan's from Strategic Coach. It's a great book, by the way, Pick Up Unique Ability on Amazon. It's uh, called Our Unique Ability. It's something that, that we are uniquely gifted at and, and incredibly good at that gives us energy that, that, will, uh, that literally you can do almost an entire day of, of this thing and, and have more energy at the end of the day. You want to keep doing it. You would possibly even do it if you didn't get paid for it. So there's also excellent stuff. Um, there's, and then there's stuff that, that there's good, and, and then there's also stuff that just typically is a time waster or you're, you're incompetent at. And so many of us kind of, we all just have this all smushed together, and we're spending not enough time here where our unique ability is, uh, because we've got so many other things that we might be working on maybe that we're excellent at or, or even incompetent at. Like for me, it's bookkeeping, anything financial related, um, you know, you can go on and on, or it's, or it's all like time waster stuff. Uh, unless you're doing, you know, unless you're going in for a very specific reason to Facebook, it's a huge time waster. You can get sucked in with everyone's photos and, and uh, you know, getting, oh, so-and-so sent you a cupcake. Send them back a cupcake. <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, all, unless you have a very specific reason, and uh, so, some of us, we have good intentions when we go into Facebook or Twitter or whatever the case is, you know, have very specific pockets of time allocated to that. But here's what you really want, ideally, is to start setting up so that all these other things, and you're going to do these other things, but so that a lot more of your time is spent on unique ability. And that typically means um, saying no to a lot of things. It means bringing in other people who are really good at stuff that you're not good at. Um, you don't have to do everything yourself. There's, uh, and especially now in this incredible virtual world, I mean, I have a bunch of virtual assistants. I got, you know, a virtual bookkeeper. I got people all over the world who are working right now for me uh, and so that I can come up and, and do, hopefully, some of my unique ability stuff. Um, the other thing that you really want to think about as you, as you start evaluating what is your unique ability or, or what gives you energy is look at, look at your day. And typically, you, you got these, these sort of these cycles like this. And, and everyone has a different one. But there's certain times of the day when we're more excited or more pumped up or, or just you know, can tackle the, the bigger, more proactive projects. And so these would be at the top here. The biggest mistake people can make is, is jumping in their email at that point. Or, you know, wow, I got so many emails. I'm going to tackle them right now as so I feel, you know, full of energy. Right. This looks uh, almost. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. So, we'll, uh, yeah. I don't even know how to fix this now. <laughs> Day. Um, so at those high points, you want to make sure that that's, that's where you're tackling the stuff that, that typically, if, uh, if you guys have read uh, Covey, Seven Habits, the only thing that really stuck with me from that are these, uh, these four quadrants. And quadrant two is the stuff that's, that's important but not urgent. So if we can focus in on that stuff, all of us know exactly what that is. It's the proactive stuff. And for me, I have a rule that I don't go to bed unless I do one proactive thing in my business every single day. Um, so sometimes that means hanging out at the bar with my buddies, which is where all the joint ventures actually occur. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see what Ken's face is. Uh, or you know, it could be whatever the case is, um, writing, writing a sales letter, even something as, as dumb or simple as as adding a little autoresponder to my sequence or, or emailing somebody to, to set up something. Something proactive, but, but try and follow that as, as a rule and, and you'll see what happens. And just like that little diagram of, of you see the small differences and then pretty soon you see this big, big jump. All right. Um, I got two more things in the make money part. This will be, this will be interesting to see if anyone can figure this out. Wow, who said that? <laughs> All right. You get an instant sales letter CD ROM too. All right. <laughs> That's pretty good. Hey, you think so? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be autographing these later. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Good luck. All right, so here's my little penguins. And uh, all penguins, pretty much, they all look the exact same, right? And it's really hard to tell them apart. So what I've done that has worked incredibly well for me in my business is you want to be the penguin with the mohawk and the earring or the, you know, something. You want, you want to stand out in some unusual way. You got your penguin boxer shorts on or, or something. But that's where I've made almost all my money is going the opposite direction from where, where uh, most of the marketplace is. And, you know, like I told you, the question that I asked myself about instant sales letters, how can I create a, uh, a, a automatic money-making website, it makes me money while I sleep, is an incredible value to people, and it can't be an e-book. So even at that point, which is 99, I didn't want to be just an e-book, because you're not really going to make a huge splash with an e-book for the most part, unless you got a really compelling hook or a unique angle. We can talk about that a little bit, too, during the Q&A. Um, so I create instant sales letters, which is sort of like software, but not really. It's like a very uh, low rent version of software. Uh, but it was different enough that, that it got people excited, got a lot of affiliates involved. So when I created the underground online seminar, um, you know, Ken's done a good job here because this is different. It's about joint ventures, and that's what it's all about. And he brings you guys together uh, to, to try and put together deals. But so many internet seminars, would you say that there's a shortage of internet seminars going on? No. Um, so what I did is, is I said, okay, how can I have something different out there? And that was, I'm going to bring in people who are real world people who are making tons of money, who, who don't normally talk about it, and, and I'm going to have them on stage, and we're going to create a whole experience around it, not just an educational component. And uh, Joshua Ryder is one of our speakers. Uh, I can't remember what year, maybe Underground 2 or something. Yeah, it was one of the beginning ones. Yeah. So uh, we, we've since got more and more elaborate in hiring like the actors who played James Bond. I think when, when you were there, we had Mini-Me, yeah. So, so we'll do you know, really different things out there. You know, bring in Mini-Me, Vern Troyer is an awesome powers theme. And last year we brought in a um, guy who played James Bond, George Lazenby, um, on Our Majesty's Secret Service. But if you can just remember this part, you know, be the, be the uh, Mohawk Penguin. Um, just, Go out there and do something, something different that is going to, you know, all the marketplace is going here. It's really hard to be a better me too. What are we going to do? We're going to cut, maybe try and cut costs or something like that. Well, you know, so-and-so is selling this, but I'm going to sell it for half the price. That's a losing formula in most cases, and that's a really bad way of competing. You want to compete by, by being different. And at the same time, what that does is, is creates, usually, if you do it right, it creates this incredible buzz. Um, and I'll share with you, I have a whole presentation that I've been sort of playing around with, but I'll show you the, the concept behind it. I think you'll get it right away, is uh, think about expectations So if you think about every single, um, I call this astonishment architecture, and it's sort of something I've been playing around with for a little bit, while. But if you think about every single touch point that you have that your customer has with you, um, before, during, after a sale, um, and, and you, can, you can just start listing them all on. You know, a great example was uh, Virgin America. Has anyone flown Virgin America yet? Come on. Get flying Virgin America. Um, it's, it's a great airline as far as... Most airlines, or give me some examples of, of airlines. Let's talk about United, Continental, uh, Delta, American. What, what about them? They all suck. Let's, let's hear about them. The, you know, what do you guys, what's your airline experience like? Crowded. Crowded. Baggage. Cramped. Cramped. Delays. Delays. Taking away services. What's that? Taking away services. Taking away services. No food. Yeah, all right, so what Virgin America did, which is great, is they literally started the blank slate and said, what, and that's a great question too, remember, I, I always go back to questions, how can we create the ultimate airline experience? And so they don't have the little stupid cart that goes down the, the aisle that always bumps into your knee or your, your elbow or whatever, and, and they feed you uh, whenever you want. They have a little touch screen and you order your, your sandwich or food there. Um, for first class, it's almost a live flat kind of bed, which is pretty crazy for domestic. 
Um, you walk in, it feels like a, it's a lounge. It's got this soft purple lighting. It's like, it could be more like a club. And, uh, and, and everything's this bright white with this purple lighting. And it's, it's pretty cool. And, and the, the people that work there are actually happy to work there. They make it fun. Um, you know, so that's all of that stuff. They've also added Wi-Fi. They added something dumb, which is incredibly useful. They have a plug at your seat. Right? So if we're going uh, here to DC to LA, how many of your laptops die like you know, two hours into it or three hours into it or whatever the case is? Uh, mine is always dying and I'm like, screw it, I guess I'll have to read. And, uh, but having that plug there, it's something so dumb, but it's something that I'll talk about. And now they added Wi-Fi on all their flights. So if you look at, and a really cool place to see um, if companies are doing this or what you're, is going on in, in the marketplace, even if they're talking about you or not, go to search.twitter.com. It's a real-time conversation, and you'll see if, if anyone's even talking about you. And if they're not talking about you, you need to create these astonishing things that exceed expectations that help them give them a crutch to talk about you. Uh, so you know, if you look in Virgin America, they're talking about the Wi-Fi. They're talking about just how cool it is. Um, Zappos is another great example. I'm friends with uh, Tony, uh, CEO of Zappos, and, uh, and then Alfred, who's our COO, who actually gets stuff done, and, and Tony's the face of it. But Alfred and I, after a couple drinks, we, this is what he told me. This is all they do. He said, Yannick, my only job at Zappos, our job is to manage expectations and exceed them. I'm like, hey, it sounds so simple, but it's just, you know, really, it, it's incredibly powerful. All right. Uh, let me give you guys one last, uh, wow. What time am I done, Ken? You're done at, um, Noon? Okay. All right, so let me give you uh, a couple ways that, that I use that to motivate myself that, uh, you know, any time that I got a project out there, all of us have these half-done projects or stuff that's, that's hanging out in our hard drive and, and uh, you know, guess what? They're never going to make you any money unless you get them out there. So let me give you some of the things that I've done to, uh, to kind of trick myself into, uh, into doing some of these things that we've talked about. Um, I, um, and, you know, you can decide how, how far you want to go with this or not, but I have this company called Maverick Business Adventures that, that I started that, that takes these um, really successful entrepreneurs on these cool trips, combines it with business building, and combines it with uh, teaching kids entrepreneurship. And I had this idea literally in my journal for like two years. By the way, that's another cool little tip. Uh, all of us are entrepreneurial, and we all have probably more ideas than we know what to do with. Keep an idea journal so you have it all in one spot so you don't have this, feel this need to like get 18 projects going at once. That's, that's one of the big things that, that I see so many people screwing up is, is, uh, is that they try and get too many things going at once and it wears themselves too thin. Uh, but so, so go public. So what I did is I literally announced this on my blog to my mailing list. I said, um, January 2007? 2008? I can't remember. Uh, I, I said, we're going to do our first trip for this thing. Hold me to it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of, I'm going to show you what, what I'm doing to actually get this thing up and going. So that's, that's another reason, that's another thing that you can do is document it. And all of that forced me to actually document the steps and the processes and, and the things that I did to get that up and going that, that made it, made me feel accountable to, uh, to these people. Um, number three, have a, uh, have a reason why. So the bigger your reason why that you want to get a project out there or do something or whatever the case is, the more, more you're going to be able to, to get it done. Um, my, uh, another, my, my, my f funny one is to, uh, make a bet. Um, and the more embarrassing and the more, uh, the more painful the, the, uh, the, the loser uh, has to, whatever their actions are, the more you're going to get whatever done. Uh, you know, with, with my mastermind group uh, a couple meetings ago, we had one guy in there, and he had, he had a new project he was working on. It was like a golf project. And it was literally at the point when, you know, you needed that much more, and you could turn on the traffic, start driving everything to it, start making money. But as some of us, a lot of us get into this perfectionism disease and, and we're like, well, it's not quite ready. So I'm like, dude, 
here's what we're doing. Tomorrow morning, um, if that thing is not up, I'm going to go into the Hard Rock store. I'm going to buy you the, uh, you know, the girliest, most thrilliest, just, just the goofiest outfit. And uh, you have to wear that out to the blackjack tables with me the entire night. And uh, you better believe he got his project done. So uh, you know, having something like that, find someone who, who, uh, who will hold you accountable, hold your feet to the fire, and then make a, a really kind of silly, retarded bet with them. And I bet you'll get it done. Um, you know, I, I've done bets where, you know, the Borat swimsuit, the, uh, the lime green, uh, and I really want my friends to lose because I want them to wear the, uh, you know, the crazy uh, lime green uh, deal. By the way, quick little side story. It actually, uh, that will, we'll go back to it at some point. <laughs> oh, you want to hear that? All right, so, uh, so I was Borat for, for Halloween two years ago, and my rule for Halloween is you do not break character. Um, you, you know, you have to be in character uh, the entire time. And um, so I had the, the swimsuit thing on, and uh, I tried it on for my wife, and she's like, please take that off. I've lost all sexual feeling for you. <laughs> and so I had it on, but I had the, uh, the Borat suit over top of it. So I wasn't brave enough to wear just the, the deal out to this party. And you'll, explain, you'll know, understand why in a second. We had just moved into this neighborhood. We're probably like 10 years younger than most of the people in this neighborhood. It's a pretty, uh, pretty affluent neighborhood. And uh, they have this huge Halloween party, like 150, 200 people. They just got there maybe four months before that. So I only knew that neighbor, this neighbor, and this neighbor a little bit. And they're like, okay, well, you know, come to this Halloween party. And so I show up there, and, uh, and they're like trying to introduce me to people. They're like, Yannick, here's so-and-so, you know, your neighbor down the street. I'm like, nice to meet you, my neighbor. And they're like, who is this freak? And so, you know, the entire time, I'm like, high five. And, and, and Missy was nursing at the time, so she, you know, she literally told me she was running anytime she heard Borat in the same room. And uh, it was, I thought it was funny. Uh, that's all that counts, really. Uh, all right, number five. This is, uh, this is my most important one that, that I always do. And create a, a, a must-hit a must deadline. And so some of these kind of, kind of all mesh together. Like, you know, you can go public and then have the must-hit deadline. Um, when I did my first, my very, very, very first event ever, it was um, my 30th birthday bash. And, uh, and I had no idea if we were ever going to get anyone to show up to this event. I had no idea if, you know, whatever. I threw out the date. And having that must-hit deadline, I mean, I, had, I was on the hook for hotel rooms. I was on the hook for just gallons of coffee and all sorts of uh, pastries or whatever, you know, you need to, to have a, a great seminar. And it is pretty scary. But having that deadline, I'm like, damn, I better fill this thing. And uh, we had like 500. I don't know, 540 or 60 people, which at that point was like one of the biggest uh, internet marketing seminars um, ever. And so having that must hit deadline, and you know, you can do it in a small way too. Um, even something as simple as having, you know, you're like, well, I gotta add some more crap to my autoresponder. So if you, you stick up a, we're gonna have a three part or whatever, six part email uh, campaign or course, mini course that goes out to you, and you're gonna get a new lesson every other day or every day. So all you have to do is write that first lesson, right? And then you got a day to, as long as you, if you start getting some people in there, then, then you have the next day to write that next one and the next day. And so all those are like must-hit deadlines that force you to do stuff. And, and you literally trick yourself in, into doing that. And you can do it in, in product development ways too. I've done uh, webinars and e-classes and things like that where we literally will have the first lesson done. And I'm like, okay, well, next week we got, got to get the next lesson done. So I'm busy writing the next lesson as the people are going through it. And it just forces you to do it. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's real quickly talk about the other two aspects in that, in that crazy scientific Venn diagram. And we're going to talk about having more fun. So uh, you already heard the, uh, the, the Borat story. And, and so that's you know, it's kind of a little glimpse into my weird, demented psyche. Uh, but so many people, like I said, you have this, you know, it's like we, we fear this incredible guilt if we're out having fun because we got a full inbox or we got 101 things that we got to get to. Guess what? They're always going to be there. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're gonna, you can go through your emails tomorrow and, and be like down to zero, and pretty quickly you just have a crap load that, that show back up. You got 
a crap load of to-dos on, on your list. And if you just keep doing that and that and that and nothing else, you pretty quickly just become this surly, not very interesting person uh, to hang out with. And there's so many excuses. Oh, you know, I need more money to go have fun. I, or or they're waiting, you're waiting for a particular event or a particular thing to happen. When I make my first million dollars, you know, then I'm going to go off and, and you know, for a month go, go sail the, uh, the Virgin Islands or whatever the case is or whatever our, our big goals are. And guess what happens? There's no, like, incredible... Uh, I heard, uh, I heard Jay Abraham talk about this once, and, I, and this was before I was really successful, and I, I kind of I didn't get it, and I didn't, it didn't really hit with me. And he's like, you know, when you get that million-dollar mark in your bank account, there's no, you know, the skies don't open up, and the angels aren't, like, singing down upon you, and, and it's just this great magical event, and, and you don't have a, a parade or whatever. It's just sort of like, okay, it happened. And, uh, and, and so... All along the way, as we're building up towards whatever our financial goals are, if you need that, you need that fun, and you can't wait for that that special day. Um, and here's the other thing that 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 fun and whatever fun is to you. Here's what it does. Yes. <laughs> All right. Instant sales letter sitting around for you. Ready, Lisa? You're gonna catch. This thing's sharp. I don't want to poke any eyes out. Um, so this is what, you know, having, having that does is it, it totally recharges us. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> where, does this, where does this lead to? It's going to be like a little tail. <laughs> um, so there's a great book called uh, Power of, uh, of Full Engagement. Anyone read that? Um, and in there, it, it has this quote, and I don't know if I wrote the quote down in my book or not. Um, yeah, I don't think I did, but the, esen the essence of this quote is that the deeper and the more involved our, our recreation or the time off is, um, our fun is, the more we refill our tanks, the more we become inspired. Um, you know, how many of you get your great ideas when you're sitting at your desk? Yeah, yeah you do. All right. You're the only one. Your desk must be nice. I, I don't do crap at my desk that's actually really good. I'm in the shower. Those are my best ideas. I'm, uh, you know, off doom buggy racing or whatever, and I, I get really good inspiration and ideas. Um, just whatever the case is. Most times, we're not going to have those great insights and ideas. And also, you know, this all kind of ties in. If you have that, that question, kind of, you know, if, if you have that, the question, whatever our big question is that we're focusing in on, and have that in the forefront of your mind, then you're off kayaking or you're off just hiking in the woods or whatever the case is, that's when you get that idea. And there's been many times when I've been soaking wet, running out of the shower, and Mrs. <laughs> is like, what are you doing? I'm like, shh, and I got to write down uh, whatever, whatever I got going on. Um, one of my friends even sent me like this little board that you could stick up in your shower, and it kind of looks really cheesy, so I never, never used that. But uh, he has, he sits in his hot tub, and he has like this waterproof paper that he's used, and um, so you can, you know, all, all that stuff really helps. But, but the, the fun part, I mean, you really got to gotta work at it, too, just like, just like you work at, at your business. And here's where we, uh, we screw up for the most part. This is what you got to do. Anyone? Oh, who said a calendar? Damn, Lisa, you, you don't get two. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, that's, that's what we got to do is, uh, you know, you have an appointment on your schedule, right, for, for a business meeting, a teleseminar, a webinar, or a whatever, uh, a, uh, you know, whatever, a doctor's appointment. It gets scheduled. For some reason, we don't schedule enough fun into our lives and actually keep these appointments and keep them sacred like we would, um, you know, a, a meeting or, or something for, for work. So... Get out there and, and put something on your schedule and just, you know, just block off, block off your calendar, block off a time, and, and really just do it. I, I promise you, you'll see um, a pretty remarkable change in your, in your output, in your creativity. You, um, it's, you know, you got to take it on sometimes a little bit of faith uh, to, to do it, especially when you're super busy and you're like, screw Yannick, I'm not going to go have fun because, you know, that, there, I have so much to do. 
Um, here's the other thing that you can add to kind of everyday uh, events. And if anyone gets this, I'll be really impressed. This just in December? Oh, yeah, only December is your fun day. Yeah, no, this is <laughs> hopefully every month. Um, wow, this is bad. All right. Who knows what that is? It is a hand. What's it doing? No. We'll have to work on that one. <laughs> Talking. Yeah, you know, I've been threatening to do a sock puppet presentation at one point. Um, that is a really poor pinch. And, uh, and I, I always have this notion of, uh, of adding a uh, kind of a, a pinch of fun into, into everything that you do. And um, so here's a couple quick examples. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> let's see which ones we're going to talk about. Um, well, let's see. We just add, um, so you know, you'll, you'll everyone goes out to dinner. You'll go out to dinner with a with a group of people. I created this game that that uh, I don't know if we're ever going to do anything with it or not. But it's called Dinner Quirks, and I hand everyone an envelope, and uh, inside are three quirks that you need to do during dinner. And uh, it could be uh, that your hands are like uh, incredibly attracted to any metal, so uh, or you know you're, you're like attached to your silverware. Um, you only talk about yourself in third person. You, uh, you're, you're a close talker. Uh, you sing your, your, your order to the waiter. You, um, you know, I have, we have a whole litany of these things. And, uh, and it gets, uh, what else? Oh, you have an invisible friend with you. Um, that gets really fun when, when, when you're like, uh, oh, can I get, you know, another seat? Yeah, another, another plate, please. Oh, yes. yes, yes. And, and then, like, the waiter's, like, waiting to take your order. They're like, is your whole full party here? I'm like, Yes. Obviously, <laughs> you know, it, it, we did this, it, it's even better, like if you do it at a high-end restaurant, like do it at Morton's or something, or, or uh, you know, go out to dinner tonight and, and add some, some of these things to it. I, I find it hilarious, but like, once again, I'm, I'm kind of warped and whacked out. And uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, you know, have, have people like at Morton's that are passing around the salad dressing, and, and one of my things was that my hands were magnetically attracted to metal, I'm like, and the guy's like, sir. I'm like, yes. And I'm like, Ugh, and pulling it back. It, it's, it's funny. Um, so anyway, dinner quirks. I own dinnerquirks.com. If you, if you want to join venture with me on that, let me know. We can, we can market it. Um, all right. Uh, you know, just do random stuff. Like uh, me and uh, my buddy Jim Edwards, we were in Vegas together. Uh, I took my mom, and he took, uh, he took his mom. And we were there together. And uh, anyone been to Tony and Tina's wedding, that show? Anyone heard of it? One person? OK, a couple people heard of it. So the whole idea behind that, and that's also a great example of going the opposite direction, by the way, too, is uh, you know, all shows are pretty much the same. It's, it's you sit there and you watch. But Tony and Tina's wedding, it's interacting. You've been invited to be a guest at this wedding of Tony and Tina. They're uh, you know, an Italian family, very characterized kind of Italian family. And, and everything's like sort of improv, but, but there, there's, a, uh, there's sort of a, a flow to it. So Jim and I, I'm like, Jim, OK, we're going to go to this thing. Um, he wanted to go to it. I'm like, OK, well, if I'm going, we, we need to uh, do it upright. So I ordered, um, I ordered for us pink ruffle tuxedo and a uh, light blue ruffle tuxedo that uh, I made both of us get into. And uh, you know, pretty quickly, it's, you know, it's a little, little extra little tweak. But pretty quickly, we became just like this outrageous life of Tony and Tina's wedding. And literally at the end of the event, I kid you not, it was so funny, the, the woman, one of the uh, women in, in the play, um, she comes up to us. She's like, you guys are really good. She's like, we have auditions next week. Would you like to come out and, and audition for it? Uh, we're just sort of laughing on the inside. We're like, yeah, we're going to give up our you know, million dollar plus uh, businesses to, uh, to go hang out in Tony and Tina's wedding. But uh, it could be fun. Who knows? Uh, but so adding things like that, and then uh, you know you can add even even more fun to it. Um, I've been so the, the tweaks. So I, I did a um, a a a, uh, a road rally, an exotic road rally with my buddy Frank Kern a couple years back, and and everyone there you know had nice cars or whatever, and we went from LA to Denver. But what we decided to do was dress up as Elvis every single day, and we called it Elvis Lucian, where we started as 1950s Elvis. Then went to uh, 70s Elvis, 
then went to fat, bloated Elvis. That was my favorite one. And then Elvis at the end. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's just, it just gives it that, that dose, that extra little bit. Even when you take a really fun activity like this road rally, it was incredibly fun, but then you tweak it a little bit. And uh, probably the funniest part about that is, is Kern, um, a little side story about Kern. This will be, for anyone that knows him or knows his persona, this is like perfect for him. So we're supposed to go in his Ferrari. The dude, he had moved from Georgia to California. He let his tags expire. He couldn't pass emissions because of a stupid Ferrari. Um, and so it's like literally the day before, I'm like, so what are we going to do? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, we'll find something. And so he shows up. He has this lime green Lotus Elise, this little tiny Lotus Elise go-kart. And big fat Elvis in Lotus Elise <laughs> is just, that's, that's a sight. Um, you want to, you know, not just have the fun for yourself, but do it for others. Uh, my mom uh, got married a couple years ago um, where she'd been uh, living with her, her boyfriend for a while, and she got married, and I'm like, okay, I'll pay for your wedding, pay for the whole thing, pay for your honeymoon, only under one condition, though. I'm like, Elvis has to marry you. <laughs> She's like, fine, whatever. And I think she, uh, she don't, her and I, uh, we definitely have that, that same sort of whacked out sense of humor. Uh, my, my stepfather was not, not that excited, but he went along with it. It was free wedding and free honeymoon, and... Um, so we went to Vegas and Elvis married, married her off. Um, also doing it for other people, like uh, my dad has been threatening forever that he wants flying lessons. And, uh, and, and my stepmother, who's also Russian, she's like, no, Joseph, only stupid people like Yannick do these things. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, oh, okay, good. And, and so, you know, even like talking about it or whatever. And so one day I call him up and I'm like, I'm like, Joe, I call my dad Joe, because so I worked with him for so long. I'm like, Joe, I need a ride to the, to the airport, this little tiny airport, um, because uh, my, my car service won't take me out there, and Missy's busy. And he's like, okay. And uh, he picks me up. He's like, all pissy. We're driving over. He's just pissy. He's like, so why, why can't Missy take you? What, what? No, I can thank you. What? I'm like, oh, I don't know. And so we show up at the airport, and, uh, and it's like this little tiny Cirrus plane, which is a four-seater. Uh, it's that one with the parachute. And a buddy from my hockey team is a pilot, so I asked him to come out there. And, uh, and so we show up, and he's like, you're going to be okay in this? I'm like, actually, you're going to be okay in it. <laughs> and, it. And you see the wheels turning for like a split second, he's like, oh. And, uh, and but, you know, he has that moment of truth where he's like, okay, he's been talking about it for like years. I'm on flying lessons. I'm going to go up in the plane. And, and he's like, okay, I did this. And, uh, and Missy, before I left, the only thing she said to me before I left is, don't get in the plane with him. <laughs> So, of course, I got on the plane with him, and uh, I got to film it and, and, you know, get that all down. And it was like two hours, we were up in the air, he had a great time, we get back down, he, you know, he gives me a big hug, he's so happy. And, um, and so, having, you know, creating that fun or creating those experiences for other people is sometimes even more rewarding than, than it is for, for yourself, and, and that, that's really exciting to me. Uh, of course, uh, my stepmother had called him like probably like five times while we were up in the air, and, and, and she's like, I had this feeling, Yannick, do something stupid. <laughs> the other thing is, you can add, add this fun element in, uh, in your business, too. Uh, don't just, and, and you know, all of this has to, has, has to resonate with you. If you're sort of this bored, boring, lame person, you're probably not going to do uh, this stuff, but... You know, it has to be authentic and genuine to, to who you are. And all of us have this unique personalities that a lot of times we just don't incorporate. Like for me, I'm sort of goofy. I'm a bit of a, of a goofball, and that's truly who, who I am. And uh, so, like, I've done promotions as, as Count Yannick. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, this is Count Yannick. Ah, 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 ah. And, uh, you know, get the ultimate copyright, of course. Blah, blah, blah. And it was, yeah, I, I don't know if you can find it anywhere online, but it's, it's, it's worth a, an amusing, uh, amusing three minutes. I had some guy like Flash Animator kind of uh, get a cartoon of me and, and then put it out there. And, it, and you know, I, it was so cheaply done that it only does, does this. And then my mouth moves like this. <laughs> I'm Kyle Dalley. Well, it's, it's bad. <laughs> but, uh, and that came out of a Halloween costume, too, where Missy was also annoyed, where I was the count from Sesame Street, and, and I'd walk in, and I'd be like, one, two, three beers, ah, 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 ah. And when you're the count from Sesame Street, you really got very little, you know, not many lines that you can use. And, and you know, the rule was you stay in character all night. And even my cousin, who loves me to death, she's like, you are so freaking annoying. <laughs> 
Um, you know, have, have fun in your business. And, and that's why one of the big, and, I, and uh, last uh, time that I spoke for Ken, I talked about copywriting. And where, where's Trevor? There he is. One of my big secrets for copywriting that I always love to do is, is adding a reason why. And so I'll I include like a fun reason why sometimes, you know, have fun with it, have fun in your business. So I'll have like a picture of myself standing in, and this is true, like standing in a room full of boxes like up to here, and it was called uh, Save Yonick's Marriage Sale, I think, or Stop Yonick's Divorce Sale, I can't remember what it was. And the story was that Missy was really pissed off, that I had, we had the storeroom that was just out of control, and a couple people get bent out of shape, and you know, they, those are the people that you automatically be like, okay, unsubscribe. They're like, they're like I can't believe that you're doing that and, and your wife would say that or whatever. I'm like, dude, it's tongue in cheek, get a, get a, get a life, get a grip. Um, it got worse though when uh, when we exploited the children. We had the uh, the baby Z sale, and those did really well. But uh, they're like, I can't believe you're exploiting your child. I'm like, of course. <laughs> so so have some fun with it. The um, and have some fun in your business. Like I talked about, you know, the underground seminar. Um, has anyone gone to one of those? Joshua and Greg have been there. Anyone else uh, been to an underground seminar? You guys got to get out there since we have a ton of fun. Uh, and, and I'm not pitching it here or anything like that, but uh, it's, you know, we have, like we brought in this band called the Spasmatics, which is like this 80s band, and, uh, and we have a big party. We had a casino night where we're literally dressed up black tie and had evening gowns and, and did all sorts of things like that. So, you know, have fun in your business. Let, you know, why, why separate the two or, or why just, why suck it up during the day and, and then so you can have fun on the weekends or whatever the case is. All right. Yes, no prize for that. <laughs> All right. So I am a big believer in having a uh, ultimate life list. And I have part of mine up on my blog at internetlifestyle.com. And uh, you, can, you can see it on there. But, you know, adding stuff. So I, I think about what kind of experiences do I want to have? What kind of people do I want to meet? What do I want to have even uh, materialistically? What do I want to do? What do I want to be? Um, and, you know, so think about that and write that down. You, you guys, anyone have a, a bucket list or a life list or anything like that? Awesome. All right. Anyone want to share what's on there? A couple things. You can possibly make them happen. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yeah. Want to come up right now? Sure. I'll take a break here. You just read through this notebook. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. No, that's, that's a great thing to have on there. Ken, just next speaker. <laughs> um, all right, anyone else want to share anything? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, jeez. Hey, Yannick, Bob the teacher. Um, I want to go to all four of the major tennis tournaments. Cool. Um, I've been to Wimbledon already, and U.S. Open's coming this September, so I've got two more to go after awesome. that. Awesome. One of mine is um, I, I rent these cars. Like, I've had a Maserati for a month because I can only really afford to have it for that long. <laughs> so I really want a Lamborghini for at least a year. <laughs> nice. Okay. Greg? Okay, so I'm going to steal his idea, so we're going to go public with it. Going to the Winter Olympics. That's so, on my list. <laughs> yeah, so with what you're doing with the Maverick Business Ventures, we need to get like a whole group of people, and like we'll rent like a whole hotel or something, <laughs> and we'll have this huge party at the Winter Olympics in Vancouver. And uh, Toe Cracker's going to set that up for us. <laughs> he, he's like, he was just telling me that he's going to get 15000 for three weeks for renting out his pad. He's like, 15000 versus these guys from JV Alert. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, since I was born, um, I've lived in 16 countries on five different continents. Wow. So I still have Antarctica to go for half a, a year at least and Africa. Wow, so very cool. I got to live there long term in Africa and Antarctica. Cool. All right, uh, we're going to move on real fast. But I, that, that kind of stuff, I love that stuff because A, when you, you know, depending on how you feel, but when you put it out there, you'll be amazed at, at the kind of weird synchronicities that happen. Like one of my things is to, um, have a raging party at the Bridge Suite in the, in the Atlantis Hotel, which is you know the big connecting suite that's like twenty five thousand a night. And I got contacted a couple months ago by someone who works at Atlantis, and she's like, "Well, you know, when you're ready to make that happen, let me know." And 
Um, so all these weird you know, things can happen. Um, the other thing is don't, I, I say never settle for an ordinary life, banish the ordinary. Um, it's part of the DNA of, of our company. But don't, don't like take down your, your, you know, gosh, I can, you know, maybe only have a Lamborghini for, I'm gonna pick on you a little bit. I can only have a Lamborghini for one year. Um, you know, what if you, you know, if you ask yourself the, the questions, you know, how can I have it for a year and get someone else to pay for it? Or, or how can I have it for my whole life and have someone else pay for it? You know, you can, you can think of some other creative solutions. So like, one of the things on my list was, I wanna be a semi-pro beach volleyball player. Um, you see me here, I'm not exactly the, uh, a towering, uh, a, yes, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I can still say that I'm taller than Ryan Dice. Uh, <laughs> he loves when I tell him about that. So I had that on my list because I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not, you know, like small for beach volleyball is like 6'3". Um, and I have a friend who's on the pro tour and he, we were literally IMing one day and he's like, he's just sort of complaining, wasn't telling me anything about it, he's just sort of complaining. He's like, oh, my partner just bailed on me. So he wanted to play with this guy named Karch Karai, who's like this legend in volleyball. And uh, it was literally like two hours before the deadline for this last tournament for the AVPs. And uh, he's just sort of telling me that. And I throw it out as a whim. I'm like, oh, you know, you need a five foot eight partner. He's like, yeah, whatever. And uh, so um, about an hour and a half goes by. I get the phone call. He's like, all right, you're in. So I must have been like the, I don't know, like here on the B list coming out to the stage. I'm, I must have been like the, uh, the, I don't know, like the Q list or something. Uh, but. But so we, I played in a professional beach volleyball tournament. I had to join the association. So now I am a pro beach volleyball player. Yes. And uh, so literally on the flight home, um, I started adding more stuff to my list. I'm like, get my name inscribed on the Stanley Cup, um, host Saturday Night Live. Um, who the hell cares? It's a piece of paper or it's, or it's a computer. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You look like, a, like an idiot. I have like, go on a ride on a UFO. I mean. <laughs> Who knows? Um, <laughs> you have a contact for that? You'll hook me up? <laughs> Might not be coming back. As Ken said, this could be my last presentation. So, you know, I really look at that ultimate life list as something that also keeps you motivated and, uh, and you know, we, we can burn out pretty quickly. So why not have, have these things to look forward to and then get them done, stick them on the schedule and, and then get them done. Um, some of the stuff that I've got done recently on my life list, I am, uh, I'm scheduled to go into space when that goes up. I'm number 144 in Virgin Galactic. Um, I've eclipsed 200 miles an hour in a, in a car. Um, I went halo skydiving, which is high altitude, low opening, which is where you jump from. Um, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Uh, Missy literally had to go into uh, therapy before I went. Uh, you jump, you have a big oxygen mask on, you, wear, you uh, breathe oxygen for 40 minutes, get all the oxygen, or nitrogen out of your bloodstream so you don't get the bends on the way down, and you jump from a cruising altitude of a jet 30,000 feet. So it's like a military maneuver. That was pretty good. Uh, so, all right, let's talk about our, our third section real fast. I want to make sure that I leave, hopefully, time for questions. I was just to say giving back, giving back, and then one of the guys who's part of Maverick Business Adventures, he told me, you know, when you say giving back, that means that you've taken something um, from, from someone else. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And as entrepreneurs, we, you know, that 10 times to 100 times value, we create value. We're always giving. So I think, think of this as, as giving forward. And, uh, and you can, you know, give time. There's that watch again. All right, if you know what this is, this would be impressive. Who said top hat? Does anyone say top hat? Top hat. Yes. <laughs> it's a top hat. This is your talent. And, uh, and then, of course, you can also give uh, money. And so, you know, I, I always, I mean, it's just like this weird, I don't know quite how to explain it. Maybe, maybe Stephanie, you do, because, you know, you deal in, in a lot of this stuff, too, is, is you know, anytime you give something out, you get back this like multiple return. And it do, it's not always like a one for one. It's not like, okay, well, I'm going to give $5,000 to this charity and they're going to send me back a check for $5,750. It's like this weird karmic, I don't know how else to, uh, to, to say it. But, and, and you get this incredible, not only when, when you give, it's, um, I don't know, you, you just get multiple, multiple uh, 
multiple back. And I think it really comes down to uh, abundance versus scarcity. So having an abundance mindset versus a scarce mindset so that you can give your time, your, your talents, your, your money, whatever you can give, and not think that, okay, if, well, if I give them an hour, that's an hour less that I could be working on my business or whatever the case is. And I look at it, I try and think about just, just this little pie chart. I mean, just a little simple, like just 5%, right? It's been a rule in our businesses that we, uh, we, we donate 5% to different charities, foundations, things that I'm really passionate about. And uh, recently, it, it used to start off with like everything from animals to the environment to whatever. And now it's just really become really focused. I've gotten much more clear on what is is I'm really passionate about and want to have a direct impact on, and that's uh, young entrepreneurs. And so for me, a lot of where, where our money goes to, we're, we're setting up mentorship programs of Maverick Business Adventures with the Branson School of Entrepreneurship in South Africa, doing all these different things. And it's all about the young entrepreneurship because I really think entrepreneurs, micro businesses in third countries, third world countries, they can have a just dramatic impact. So we'll, Donate to like Village Enterprise Fund is a great one if you want to check out some. Virgin Unite does some really great stuff. Kiva is a really good one. And I look at this 5%, uh, and you know, this is, this is a guideline. Take it or leave it, do whatever you want with it. But, but I look at it like this. Who's got it? The toothbrush, who said that? Mike, you already got a prize. Who, uh, someone else said toothbrush. But you know, we, uh, we don't stop brushing our teeth every single day, right? It's become a habit. So if we can get into this habit of giving, then it just, like for me, when we, uh, the checks were really, really small when we started doing this, but pretty soon they got pretty big. And if I, if I was, so many of us are, are waiting around saying, okay, when I make that first million, I'm gonna donate 100,000 to whatever charity I'm really passionate about or, or foundation or I'm gonna give my time up. And it's a lot harder then. Um, it's, I, I find it easier if, if it becomes habitual. Um, and you know what, if you don't think that you can do it, um, just, just uh, raise your prices 5%. So our prices are so elastic for the most part, I, I swear it's not gonna matter unless you're like trying to be this low cost discounter. Um, so I got, I got more on this, but in the spirit of time, I wanna, I wanna uh, take some questions and we'll take questions on internet marketing, on whatever you guys wanna talk about. Uh, at the same time, if you guys could just hand out um, I came with a very impressive handout for you guys. It's, uh, you guys better hold on to your wallets. It's going to be a big, big, big package that, uh, that you guys got to buy. It's, uh, it, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's more a gift, but it's something that, that we need to just uh, get shipping and handling for you from on. And it's, uh, you get, um, I'm not even going to spend too much time talking about it, but I'm going to give out a bunch of these too. But 34 Rules for Maverick Entrepreneur's book audio program that comes with it, this DVD that I did at one of our first Maverick Business Adventures um, outings where it was, it's about $15,000 to, to have been in that group and to go to this trip and what my presentation was, you'll get that on a DVD. And so this is for this newsletter I have called Maverick Business Insider Newsletters. Anyone subscribe to that? All right, a couple people. So uh, it's, you know, just pay shipping and handling now and you get a whole big package of stuff sent to you and then uh, if you don't like it, just cancel, you'll never, get billed again. If you like it, you'll get billed uh, $39.95 a month. So it's, it's, it's not a break the bank kind of package. Um, so, all right, questions on anything? Milana. Yes, hello. This is the story lady, and yes, I would love to speak to you about that contact for your UFO. I think we could have a lot of fun with a great story around that online. <laughs> but my question to you is this. What is your most profitable product or project that has come, that occurred to you while you were having fun? While I was where? While you were having fun. Um, you know, that's a good question because it depends how you define profitable. Um, I'll tell you the most recent one that I think has had a really big impact and has been really profitable to me in, in a lot of different ways, not monetarily, but um, a cachet value. So I was, uh, one of my good buddies is Joe Polish. And, uh, and Joe and I, he, uh, he came on our last Maverick Business Adventures trip where we went Baja racing throughout the Baja Peninsula in Mexico with uh, Jesse James. And, and, uh, and we, were in the, we were partners uh, in the car and we were literally talking about his next trip to Necker Island with Branson. I wasn't gonna go this year, I went last year. And uh, I'm like, dude, you know, we just gotta partner up together on it. And we literally um, hashed it out right there and we got the big old helmets with the uh, air and, and, you know, the microphones back and forth, so it's not exactly the most uh, 
ideal kind of situation, but it worked out great. We we're in between like uh, avoiding cows and, and boulders and crazy things and falling off cliffs. We hashed out this, this deal where we did a joint trip to Necker, which raised um, $447,000 for Virgin Unite. Um, and it, like I said, got a lot of cachet value and, and having that relationship with, with Branson. So that would be my most profitable. Is that good? So oh, it was 2006 when I first saw you speak at um, a Dan Kennedy event. And I had a PowerPoint. <laughs> Probably, right? I, uh, back then, I was pretty profoundly drawn to you, just kind of watching your internet lifestyle that you were creating. And one thing that I really got out of it was that this whole fun component that is you, and it's always been you. Yeah. And. I, I hid from that for so long, and I've, I found that it doesn't even have to be quote-unquote fun. People just want to know unique things about you. Have you. Would you really attribute, attribute your success to just being genuine and authentic versus quote-unquote fun? That's a, that's a great distinction. Um, yeah, I, I think... Partially, for sure. I mean, I always tell everyone that you got to be genuine, you got to be authentic, and um, it's at the highest level. Even like you know, when I met Branson last year for the first time, it was like, wow, the dude is actually incredibly the same way as he portrays himself in the media. And I think, I think it's really hard if if you're like trying to be a stage presence or you're trying to be someone who you're not, because there's always going to be this 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 just uh, this drama in your life or, or this this tension. And so having authenticity and that genuineness, the other thing that it does is it, it draws people to you, um, and it also hopefully repels people to, from you. And that's really important if you want really good customers. Um, you want people who are genuinely bonded to you, and, and absolutely. I mean, if whatever, whatever we're into and whatever our authentic selves are, you're going to find people that, that are going to be bonded to you for that. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think that's a great lesson, an important point. Oh, I forgot to say, for the best questions, you guys get some, some uh, prizes. Here you go. 34 rules, Jen. Good. And the story woman. Ready? <laughs> so this would be awesome. <laughs> Ken, can we videotape this? <laughs> can you pass that back to her? <laughs> There's an audio in there, too, so you can listen to the audio. Um, all right, I'm ready. Okay, first off, I think it's so cool that you uh, met with Richard Branson. He is on my bucket list, incidentally. I love yes. everything about him. Next year, come to Necker with us. All right, I'll be there. So how does one get invited to Necker? You just go raise money for him? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta raise 440,000, okay, no problem. Okay, there you go. so my real question was, earlier you said, was it Instant Sales Letter was your first million dollar product yes. launch? Had you done a bunch of launches before then, or you made it sound like that was your first real launch and you made a million dollars out of it? Uh, no, that was my very first product. There's never a launch. It literally, okay. it, it, it like trickled. Um, so $1,800 my first month, $3,600 the second month, $7,800 the third month, and $9,400, $9,500, and $9,600 the fourth month. And that's when uh, things really started picking up steam. So it was never a launch. It was just release it out into the marketplace, see what happens. So my question then was, how did you make, I mean, with your first product, why do you think you made a million dollars on your first product that's uh, a couple that's things one it had one it had a unique hook to it a unique angle which is you know in a couple minutes you can create a sales letter um, it was a unique uh, positioning in the marketplace because there's other books and things on sales letters but there's never any real fill in the blank type stuff uh, that's that's probably one of the biggest things I think having that unique hook and angle is so so critically important because it was push button easy button kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's something that I call having a fish product. So you guys have all heard, um, you, uh, you know, the, the saying is if you, uh, if you feed a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That's complete and total bullshit. Just, just give him the fish. Give him the freaking fish. Yeah, create a fish product. Okay. Thank you. Catch? Thank you. Hey, Yannick. Um, Question for you about online branding. You've been creating many different products, projects, and been in business for a very long time online. What have you learned about branding yourself and your products online 
keeping in mind that your goal is to probably dominate a particular niche market. That you're saying that's what your goal is? Um, could be. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I look at branding from a couple things. Uh, you know, what Jen talked about, that authenticity, that genuineness, I think that, that's a big component of it. So standing for something, not being plain vanilla. Um, I think branding comes as a, as a byproduct a lot of times of, of the things that we do, putting out the 10 times to 100 times value kind of products. Uh, also just kind of getting clear on, on what you are and, and what, where, where you want to go so that, and, and, I, and I never did this originally because it was never, I never had a real clear picture. You know, we just, I just instinctually came out with new products that I got excited about, but they're all in the, in the same general area. So, you know, the, the branding part, I think it just comes from, from really just taking, taking the steps necessary to, to just be out there all the time. So articles, do the stuff that authorities and experts do, books, articles, blogging, all, all those things. And social media now has made it, you know, like videos, we can, we can show our personality so much quicker than we can just via, via print. So all that stuff helps, helps your branding. It also helps to, uh, you know, sometimes to, to be known for, for something. But, but then at the same time, that's a double-edged sword because now you, you could get pigeonholed into just one thing. Hi, Yannick. I'm Danielle Miller. Hi, um, Danielle. One of, my bucket list is uh, to bump it around with Carrie Walsh and Misty May. So oh, nice. <laughs> right there I with you. The, yeah. with All right. I met them at, a, at the AVP thing. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. You should go to volleyball vacations. I think one of them goes on every once in a while. Milana, here you go. Um, my question is, what do you see as sort of trends of the future in internet marketing? Where do you see like where people are going to really kind of stand out from everybody else? What are the question. things that they're going to be, um, need to be doing? I mean, the internet changes so fast. Um, here's, I've had this conversation with friends and people that I, I respect and look up to, and I see, I see a couple things. You know, and, and I'm always looking at, once again, how to be different and, and stand out and so forth. So, you know, everyone has a long-form sales letter now. That's why you saw, like, the, uh, the fake blogs. Have anyone seen the, uh, the fake blogs going around? Anyone saw this? Diet. Yeah, the diet, the uh, Akish, 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 Ashahi, however the hell you say that, berry and the, and the colonic cleanser. So, you know, it was the blog, and then you had the comments here. And then he had some of her blog posting, and that was, that was really like a sales letter done as a blog. And I don't know if that's going to be the right format, but, but there's just this interesting way of, of creating um, conversation. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest things going on. Um, Tony Shea from Zappos talks about there being this incredible transparency going on now. And we got to be aware of that. Like, look at, there's a uh, site called Yelp. Anyone been there? Yelp? Yeah, good site to go check out restaurants or services or whatever the case is. I'm also a member of Zagat or Zagat or however the hell you say it, you know, the little guidebooks for the restaurants. They just freaking totally eclipse their ass um, by, by free stuff and free reviews. Um, and that's the power of this transparency in social media. And so things like Yelp, reviews on Amazon, blogging, Twittering, um, you know, pretty quickly, we, we have to be transparent. And the more transparent that we are, I think uh, the, the more you're going to get customers involved in hopefully whatever your, your mission is. Um, and I've also been thinking a lot about this, and I'll, I'll share with you guys, if you guys are interested, I'll show you what my, my personal mission has become um, at the end of this. So I think that's a big thing, the transparency uh, and just being, a, being aware of that. The two-way conversation is no longer just us spewing our marketing and, and not having anything come back. Okay, we're going to take a final question here, and uh, I'll have a so you'll get the last word, and then, and then you can have the last word. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joey Kasimi. Hey, Joey. And um, my question is, how important do you think is a pre-launch, you know, a launch to a product as opposed to just, uh, just marketing the straight-out sales letter? Because that's one of my problems, uh, or my blocks is, should I launch a product, like a, you know, the Frank Kearns type of thing, or just like you did with your instant sales letter, just market it and let it go viral on its own? Uh, you know, it really kind of depends what your, what, what your goals are. If it's to have them make big splash and then take it off the market and then maybe reintroduce it a couple times, I'd go with that pre-launch and then have the big launch. If it is to have a really genuine product that's out there, evergreen, making you money all the time, um, I, I think 
I think do the do the release, do a little bit of pizzazz in the beginning, but but then let it. You know, you got to you got to do things to make sure that that you're always marketing it so that it will stay evergreen. So I think it really depends on what you want. Exactly. Yeah. That was the last question. All right. Um, if you guys got, if we got two more minutes, I'll share with you what, what has become. Uh, what I'm really excited about is is what our mission is. And I'll give you just a little, the thumbnail sketch of it, is uh, really. And I've kind of evaluated where where all the things that we've done, and what we're doing, all our products and things that we we got going on. So this is the, uh, I call it the entrepreneurial eco life system. And typically we'll start in, in the startup mode, go into growth, and then usually like a legacy or a give back. So we want to be involved in every aspect of this and then have a foundation and mentoring that will help kind of just, you know, when the people, most of the people that are in Maverick Business Adventures are at this stage of their business and using this part to help the next group of startups and then having tools, resources, coaching, inspiration all along the way of this whole life cycle. And the whole core of it being what we just talked about a lot, which is that, you know, the make more money, have more fun, and the give being that, being the core of that. And we have a, uh, a mission of uh, by 2020 to uh, have one million young entrepreneurs have their own startups going. Um, one million entrepreneurs like you guys hopefully buying into this philosophy of make more money, have more fun, and give more back, and, and uh, maybe doing that 5% um, wherever you want and having this huge ripple effect. And uh, one million cumulative items off of people's to-do, or not to-do, but big life lists accomplished. So that's, uh, that's kind of where, where I'm heading. And I uh, thank you guys for, for having me here. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Yannick Silver. Give him a big hand. Thank you. Uh, I got uh, I got a couple more books, so the first people that come mommy, I'll I'll grab those and Danielle, I owe you one.